Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a neat problem called Fruits into Baskets 2. It's all about figuring out a packing strategy. Don't worry, we'll break down the rules and the solution step by step. Let's get started. Alright, so here's the setup. We're given two lists of numbers. The first list, called Fruits, tells us the quantity of each type of fruit we have. The second list, Baskets, tells us the capacity of each basket we can use. Our job is to figure out how many types of fruit will be left over after we try to pack them all according to some specific rules. The rules are really the heart of this problem. First, we have to go through the fruit types in the exact order they appear in the list. We can't skip around and cherry pick the easy ones. We have to deal with the first fruit type, then the second, and so on. Now for the most important rule. When we're trying to place a fruit type, we must scan the baskets from left to right and use the very first one we find that's big enough. This means we're being greedy. We take the first option that works, not necessarily the best option. And finally, once a basket is used for one type of fruit, it's off limits for any other fruit type. If we get to a fruit type and scan through all the available baskets but none of them are big enough, then that fruit type is just left behind. Our final goal is to count how many of these fruit types get left behind. Okay, let's walk through an example to make this concrete. Imagine our fruits list is 4, 2, and 5. This means we have one fruit type with four items, another with two, and a third with five. Our baskets list has capacities three, five, and four. First up is the fruit with quantity four. We look at our baskets from the left. The first basket has capacity three. That's not big enough. We move to the next one. Its capacity is five. Is five greater than or equal to four? Yes, it is. So we place this fruit type in the basket with capacity five. That basket is now used. Great, now for our second fruit type which has a quantity of 2. We scan the available baskets again from the left. The first basket, with capacity 3 is available. Is 3 greater than or equal to 2? Yes, perfect. We place this fruit type in the first basket, now that one is used too. Last one, we have a fruit type with quantity 5. We look for an available basket. The first two are used, the only one left is the basket with capacity 4. Is 4 greater than or equal to 5? Nope, it's too small. Since there are no other baskets to check, this fruit type cannot be placed. So after going through all the fruits, we successfully placed two types but one type was left behind. The final answer for this example is 1. The logic we just used in the walkthrough is actually the most direct way to solve the problem. This is a classic simulation. We'll just write a program that mimics the exact process we did by hand. We'll need a loop for the fruits, and inside that, another loop to scan the baskets. And here's what that simulation looks like in Python code. Don't worry if it seems a bit much at first glance, the logic is exactly what we've been discussing. Let's break it down into smaller pieces. First we initialize a variable, let's call it count, to zero. This will keep track of our unplaced fruit types. Then we start the main loop, which iterates through each fruit in the fruits list. Everything inside this loop handles the logic for just one type of fruit at a time. Inside the loop, for each new fruit, we create a little flag, here called unset, and we set it to one. Think of this as us assuming the fruit will not be placed. Then, we start our inner loop to check the baskets. If we find a basket at index i, that's big enough, we've found a home. We then do two important things. We set the unset flag to zero because the fruit was placed, and we immediately break out of this inner loop. We do this because the rules say we must use the leftmost basket, so once we find one, we're done searching for this fruit. Now, let's look closer at that line, where we set the basket at index i to zero. This is a clever and efficient way to mark the basket as used. Since the problem tells us all fruit quantities are positive, no future fruit will ever have a quantity less than or equal to zero. So this effectively makes the basket unusable for the rest of the process, without us having to remove it from the list. Finally, after the inner loop is finished, either by breaking early or by checking all the baskets, we look at our unset flag. If we never found a home for the fruit, the flag will still be one, so we add unset to our count. If we did find a home, the flag would be zero, and adding zero to our count changes nothing. This is done for every fruit, and at the end, count holds our final answer. So how efficient is this solution? Well, since we have a loop running inside another loop, we get what's called a nested loop structure. In the worst case, for every fruit, we might have to check every single basket. This leads to a time complexity of big O of n squared, where n is the number of items in the lists. In terms of memory or space complexity, we're only using a handful of variables. This doesn't change no matter how big the lists get, so it's big O of 1, 
or constant space. So to wrap it all up, we saw that a direct simulation was a perfect fit for this problem. The key was to carefully follow the rules, especially the one about picking the leftmost available basket. And we learned a neat trick. Using a value like zero as a marker can be a really clean way to handle used items in an array. I hope this explanation was helpful. If you found value in it, please hit that like button and maybe subscribe for more Leet Code breakdowns. If you have any questions or a different way to solve it, drop a comment below. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.